words of power because we are kings and our words matter. God doesn't just stare. No, no, he gets up and he comes and with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he raises up Christ from the full power of God is displayed in the resurrection. This is no shadow power. This is not half power. This is the power of God. Like the Bible says, the sun shining in its strength, the power of God displayed in its full glory is in the resurrection, my friend. If you go to Paul or if you go to any Jew who knows the Old Testament in Paul's day or even today, if you go to any Jew, right, a person who believes in the Old Testament but not the New Testament, if you go to them and say, okay, tell us where is the greatest display of God's power? If you ask them that question, okay, you know what they will say? You, there are many things God has done in the Old Testament, but if you tell them, tell us the greatest display of God, where the power of God was manifest in its full strength, in his greatest strength. If you ask them that question, if you ask Paul that question, or any Jew, they would probably say two things. One is the Exodus. Two is creation. Exodus, let me talk about Exodus first. Exodus is where God takes the people, frees the people from Egypt, right? They were slaves in Egypt. He frees the people of Israel from Egypt brings them out, right? You know, the 10 plagues that he had to do in his power to do that. He brought them out and he split open the Red Sea, made them to pass through. Do you remember that? The Red Sea, the sea stood up like this, like walls on both sides. I, I mean, is that not power? That is some incredible power, okay? The sea is standing like this. The people of Israel are passing through and after they pass through Egypt, uh, the Pharaoh and his army pass through, but God makes the waters to come down again and he drowns them in the Red Sea. Is that not power? Does Paul not know about this power? Does Paul not know his Old Testament Red Sea power? <laughs> Why does he not say that the power the believer has is like that? You see, he doesn't say it because the power you see 
in the resurrection of Christ is greater. Let me tell you why it's greater. It's greater because the Old Testament incident where the people are brought out of Egypt in, through the Red Sea is only a shadow. It's only a what? Shadow. Everything that happens in the Old Testament is a shadow of the things that happen in the New Testament, right? I mean, which means what? Pharaoh and his army were only a shadow. They were not the real thing. Let me explain. Behind Pharaoh and army was the devil. <laughs> was sin and curse and all those evil forces. These enemy in the Old Testament, whenever I read the Old Testament, wherever you find enemies of Israel, they are all shadows of the true enemies who are the devil, their sin, and those type of enemies, death. Have you ever wondered why in the Old Testament you have a lot of enemies? In the New Testament you come, you don't see any Egypt as enemy, you don't see, no, no, no. The enemies in the New Testament are only sin, the devil, death, right? Why is it like that? It's like that because the New Testament is the real thing. The Old Testament is the shadow. Pharaoh and his army were shadows of the devil and sin and death. To fight a shadow, a shadow is enough. <laughs> Are you able to follow? To fight a shadow. To fight a shadow, shadow power is enough. You don't need the full real Power. So what God did in the Old Testament when he brought the people out, he just showed his shadow power. Okay. But when you come to the New Testament with Christ in the resurrection, this is the real deal. Now here he is confronting the greatest enemies of man, the world, the greatest forces of evil. Pharaoh and army is nothing, you see. That and all is nothing. It's just people think, you know, we only get impressed by these things. But God is not. That doesn't make a big difference to Pharaoh and army. is nothing before God. Here only you have the big enemy, sin, the devil, death. These are the real enemies. And God confronts the real enemies and defeats them in the resurrection of Christ. So there he showed only shadow power. Here he shows full power, <laughs> full strength. Or let me give you an example like this, you know. It's like this sometimes, you know, uh, the children, our children are very unruly, right? Yeah, or your children, maybe. Right? Very unruly. You're, 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 you're in somebody's house and you're trying to have a conversation and they're doing some nonsense. They're just running, making noise and just unruly. But you know what? Mothers have great power, right? They have great power in their eyes. They can just look at the child with one stare, quiet them like that. Some, some, of, some of you are doing in the church, you know. You don't have to say anything to your child. Just looking at them, staring at them is enough. The child understands that stare has power, right? Now, if the stare is not enough and the child is still unruly, then you got to get up or maybe let's take it step by step. If the stare is not enough, maybe you make a movement, you know, something like that. Or even if that is not enough, then you get up and you come as though you're going to do something. Or even if that is not enough, then you take your hand or you take a... I want to leave it incomplete for my own safety. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are different levels of power. What God showed to Pharaoh and Egypt's army was just like a stare. That was enough for them. <laughs> Or it was just like a little movement. Or it was just like, uh, you know, getting up, about to do something. But he didn't really show his full power. He didn't need to. But you come to Christ's resurrection. And here, God doesn't just stare. No, no, he gets up and he comes. And with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he raises up Christ from the full power of God is displayed in the Resurrection. This is no shadow power. This is not half power. This is the power of God. Like the Bible says, the sun shining in its strength, the power of God displayed in its full glory is in the resurrection, my friend. That's why Paul doesn't choose the Exodus. He knows the Exodus. He's an expert of the Old Testament. But now the fulfillment of the shadow has come. Now no point talking in the 
shadow. Now you got to talk about the real thing. And notice, and this is what I want you to notice, Paul doesn't say Exodus, which means Paul thinks. I really think Paul thought through this. You think Paul just sat down, just wrote it down, you know? No, he would have thought through these things. You think he didn't even think as much as I thought? No, no, Paul is a deep thinker. He thought. He, he, he said to himself, what can I compare the power that is in the believer today? What can I compare the power that God is showing the believer, the efficient believers? Can I compare it to the Exodus power? No. Why not? There it's not the full power. It's just the shadow power. It's just the half power. I cannot compare it with that. I have to compare it with this. I have to compare it with the display of God's full power. God's full power is being shown to you today, my friend. See, God could say, like the EB, electricity board, he could say, well, 230 volts, enough, take, use it. He doesn't do that. See, Paul is saying the full power is shown today. Exodus, now let's go to creation. Why doesn't Paul say creation? I would have said creation, really, because I'm impressed with the power of Creation. I think a lot of people are impressed. Even in the Bible, you will see many places. You will see Exodus and creation in, throughout the Bible. In, you will see, for example, in the Psalmist, you will see Exodus. And even in the prophets, you will see Exodus. But you will see creation throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament even. Now, was there not a great display of power in creation? Did Paul not know about Genesis 1? Did he not think about Genesis 1 when he wrote Ephesians 1? What kind of power was displayed in Genesis 1? God said, let there be light and with one word created. Is that not power, my friend? That is power. <laughs> the thing to note in Genesis 1 is creation out of nothing. There was nothing and out of nothing God brought the world. And then he fashioned it and shaped it and so on. But before he fashioned it and shaped it, there was nothing. See, man, sometimes we say, oh, he's very creative. We talk about a person, we say, oh, he's very creative or oh, she's very creative no no when, when we talk about man being creative it's different from man can create with what he already has he can shape and fashion and order sequence and do all those things arrange right bring into order and all that you can do right but you cannot bring something out of nothing creation out of nothing is a power reserved for God does Paul not know about that power? Does Paul not know about creative power of God? He knows, my friend. Why doesn't he say that? He could have said that, right? If there's anything, I believe if, you, if there's anything you can compare the resurrection power to, it is probably the creation power. Because actually the resurrection is the beginning of a new creation. The resurrection of Christ in the Bible is portrayed as the beginning of a new creation. But anyway, why doesn't Paul use creation? Because I'll tell you why. It is one thing to create something out of nothing. But it is another thing to take something that is fully dead, gone, hopeless, right? And to raise that up, transform it. <laughs> you see the difference? Suppose you're cooking, you know, guests are coming home for dinner. And something happens and you leave something on the stove, right? Your main dish, you leave it on the stove and you ignore it and you don't pay attention and it burns up. How do you say that? Burns up. Right? What do you, how do you say? I don't know. It. Uh, anyway, it gets burnt. You know what I mean? Okay. It overcooks to the point of getting... Burnt and let's imagine it just gave, you know, sometimes you put things in the oven and you leave it there. It could go to like, not ashes, but kind of, you know, it's possible maybe. I don't know. I'm not a cook. But anyway, it, it, maybe it gets burnt to a great extent. What will you do? Will you take that and will you try to restore it and bring it back so that you can serve it to your guests who are coming home in the evening? No. What will you do? You will throw it away and you'll start from... Scratch, it's easier in that sense to create than to resurrect, right? It's easier to create a menu from the beginning than to resurrect a burnt menu. And maybe there are some people who are good at resurrecting these burnt uh, dishes. But you won't do that to special guests, right? You'll do that with your own family. You'll say, pray and eat, <laughs> you know. 
it's burnt but uh, you know whatever god is watching god is there he'll you know but you want, i'm sure you won't do that to a special guest who's come. Well, my point is in that sense it is easier to create than to resurrect right god took jesus who was gone totally dead in the grave jesus was powerless <laughs> this is something you got to understand okay don't get upset with me for saying in the grave jesus was powerless the power of god had to come through him a greater power that than the power which is seen in genesis chapter 1 a greater power had to go through him transform him raise up that body <laughs> that's why paul doesn't say creation power he says resurrection power you see paul what paul is doing is he's trying to explain how much power the believer has today and he's saying you know he's trying to compare it with everything he's trying to compare it with the greatest displays of power in the old testament and he's saying well it does it match exodus power does it match genesis 1 power no it doesn't match this is higher power this is resurrection power <laughs> now let's look at resurrection even resurrection you know you may wonder why paul what is so special about jesus's resurrection many people ra- rise up from the dead even today you hear stories of people rising up from the dead you know they say some ministries are their whole focus is in is to raise up people from the if you look at that type of ministry sometimes they are they have a certain pride to them you know they say well what ministry do you do oh you pray for the sick well we raise the dead we are greater than you you know that kind of <laughs> but anyways you know th- there are stories coming out of africa and things like that where they say people are raised up from the dead and ministries are really focusing on that and things like that so wh- what i'm saying is what is special about jesus is resurrection why not choose some other resurrection in the old testament where there are not resurrections there were elijah raised somebody from the dead elisha raised somebody from the dead interesting story in elisha's case uh, another man's dead body touched elisha's dead bones and this man rose again from the dead does paul not know that story that's an interest that's a good story to take and use as an example of how much power the believer has today or take the new testament does paul not know about the resurrections that jesus performed jairus his daughter's resurrection or the widow of nain her son interesting story there also you know uh, the, jesus is walking with his disciples and a funeral procession is passing by that way i talk about widow of nain her son luke 7 okay funeral procession is passing that way jesus stops the procession inquires what has happened inquires about the boy that is the only son of this lady and he feels compassion and he raises him from the dead the whole world, the town is shaken upside down they believe in jesus and so on they believe in the power of god paul knew that story he could have chosen that or he could have chosen the great miracles in the book of acts where peter raises somebody from the dead Paul himself raised a person from the dead in the book of Acts you read it in Acts chapter 20 verse 6 to 12 a very interesting story i have to say that he was preaching like this you know like i'm preaching in a on the third floor of a building paul was preaching you know and the crowd was packed third floor of the building okay and uh, the, the if you read the passage there if you read it in nlt version it says he was preaching on and on and never stopping way into the night that's what it says some translations even say midnight some people are upset with that i take too much time you know <laughs> well, well what about <laughs> no you know but but just pay attention to the story so he was preaching on and on and this guy there is a young man sitting near the window and if you read that place it says he slowly started to doze off that's how it says it and slowly fell asleep and fell fully asleep and then you will say well paul himself put people to sleep can you blame today's preachers for putting people to but the story doesn't stop there keep listening he fell asleep and he fell outside the window down from the third floor he fell down and died okay paul goes down raises him up from the dead so pre- preachers who use this as an excuse to take too much time or to put people to sleep i think we should say that if you can raise them from the dead then you can take too much time and put them to (laughs) 
there are so many resurrections paul could have chosen lazarus amazing story lazarus he was raised on the fourth day you know why fourth day because the jews believed that on the fourth day the body starts to decay okay after that point you cannot raise nobody can come back from the dead that's what they believed purposely jesus waits until the fourth day he delays his going so that fourth day comes then he shows displays the mighty power of god with one word and says lazarus come forth and he comes out what an amazing display of power everybody knew about that miracle in fact it is that miracle which the pharisees saw and said enough is enough this man has great power if we don't do something about him now we are finished so they tried to put jesus to death they started planning plotting his death from the miracle of lazarus onwards seriously paul knew about lazarus he could have used that why not lazarus you know some people think oh lazarus's resurrection looks even better than jesus's resurrection it's a fourth day resurrection not a third day resurrection no my friend let me tell you why jesus's resurrection is better why there was more power displayed in the resurrection of christ let me give you some reasons let me compare lazarus to jesus okay was the sin of the whole world put on lazarus was the curses of the whole world put on lazarus were all the diseases put on lazarus in his death in his grave when he died was death holding him down with its full power lazarus no but on jesus the sin of the whole world the sickness and the curse and death in all its full power was holding him down it was put on him and it was on him in the grave it was holding him down the power that surged through the body of jesus had to be greater than all the power combined of sin satan death sickness curse it had to break and shatter all that power in order for him to raise up from the can you say this about any other resurrection Oh, we're not done there's one there are other differences you know one huge difference one huge difference there are many people who have rose, risen up from the dead even today they say you know whatever right but one let me tell you one huge difference every person who rose up from the dead died again lazarus died again some of them maybe you haven't thought of it that way you can perform a thousand you can you can take pride in your ministry and say we do a, you know thousand people we've raised from the dead well it doesn't matter those thousand people have died again or will die again there is only one person in all of history who raised up from the dead once and he stayed risen <laughs> another difference lazarus was merely restored back to his old life <laughs> old condition okay he was just it was just a restoration right it was not a raising up to a new life you know maybe when if maybe imagine imagine lazarus had some debt he owed some money to the bank and when the bank heard that he died maybe they were very gracious and they canceled the debt but then when they heard the news that he rose up again they said take that file again you know this man is not you know we can't get away so easily let tell him to pay this debt back he was just he went back to his old life my friend you think he wouldn't have faced challenges you think he wouldn't have had the same problems he had before he would have had it maybe maybe he would have experienced a little more victory i'm not saying no but it's it was not it was only a restoration jesus was raised up from the dumps from the grave and raised up that's why we say raised up to a new kind of life not the old life how far was he raised up that passage itself tells us he was raised up where he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly you cannot compare this to lazarus or anybody right 
raised up all the way to the top, made to sit in the most powerful position of the world. And then Paul continues. He can't finish. He says, verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head. And he continues, you know. It's not just a resurrection power. It's an exaltation <laughs> power. It's a raising up from there to a new kind of life, a new body. Jesus was given a new body, right? He was totally transformed. He was not restored. He was raised up to a new life. Lazarus' resurrection did nobody any good. Let me ask you, what did you receive anything because Lazarus rose again from the dead? Now, you can perform a thousand resurrections today. Does that bring me anything or you anything? Does it bring you forgiveness of sin? Does you bring you any blessing from God? Maybe the maximum it can do is, you know, it can make you be in awe of the power of God. Wow, God raised somebody from the dead. Wow, God is a great God. That it can do, I don't deny. But it can't do anything more than that. Jesus' resurrection bring, brings us forgiveness of sin, brings us righteousness, brings us new life, makes us a new creation. Nobody's resurrection does what Jesus' resurrection does. If you see it like this, there is only one resurrection, really. This is why in theology, they, they try to differentiate between Jesus' resurrection and everything else. So they, what they do is they say, there's only one resurrection, that is Jesus. The others, better to call it with a different term, and so they use the word resuscitation, okay? So don't compare the resurrection of Christ with other resurrections or other powers, it is greater, my friend. It is greater than the greatest known power. You cannot compare the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a unique event in all of history. It is the greatest display of the power of God. It is the display of the power of God in its full glory and strength. Sing hallelujah to our God. 